Hey. Hey. Do you remember that time that the four of us went to Vegas? Because mm -hmm. we're preaching? Yeah. And while we were there, Aaron got a phone call yeah. that your son yeah. <laughs> drove a golf cart into the gas meter? Yes. In your backyard? And our entire cul-de-sac <laughs> was evacuated. That was a good one. My favorite part about the story is <laughs> that Easton went around and had to tell all the neighbors, I'm yeah. sorry, I crashed the golf yeah. cart into the uh, gas meter and had to evacuate the neighborhood. And then followed up with, my parents are in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Not my parents are pastors preaching in a no, church somewhere. No, my, my parents, parents are, in, are Vegas. in Vegas. So you know they thought, what kind of crazy people are these? It's one of my favorite stories. Oh my I haven't word. ever worked it into a sermon. No, I need to someday, someday. or maybe you, you're or, gonna yeah, have to. I don't want to steal us. from you. No, whatever. We had a lot of stories like that with between us and <laughs> God, our four kids. One. Yeah, it's a good one. Good grief. Father's Day's uh, coming up for yeah, us. Yeah. And uh, so I've been thinking of all the like dad, all the dad stories. What it, what what it is to be a parent and get to get that phone call though. What happens is you're like, say it faster. You just want to know what's happening. Oh, like y'all were. I'm like, tell me now. Is anyone like? Hurt is is our house imploded? Like what what is happening? Yeah, Aaron was ticked. Yeah, a little bit. And ticked. Whitney was trying to jump through the cell phone to strangle somebody. Yeah, maybe a little bit. And me and Rachel were just over there like. Yeah, McKinley called me <laughs> separately and was like, "Mom, he already feels so bad. Be nicer." <laughs> no, the whole meter for the whole neighborhood is on the ground now, under our golf cart. Yeah, good <sighs> job, Easton. Easton's in the room. Nothing exploded, so that's good. That would have been great if it would yeah. have been straight up like Jean-Claude Van Damme oh movie. Word. Like, it just enveloped the golf cart. But a lesson learned, he sure did have to pay that bill, so. <laughs> Gotta pay that bill. That's true. Uh, Rachel called me just a little bit ago, and uh, she's got the kids at the water park, you know, uh -huh. summertime. Yep. And uh, Titus has refused to go into one entire section of the water park. He's like, I'm not going over there. He's riding all the other slides, all the pools, won't go over there. They've been like five times, he won't go. And she finally said, buddy, why don't you want to go over there? He starts crying and he says, because that side of the water park is dedicated to a false god. <laughs> There's like a big uh, like Hawaiian face head wood thing carved on the top of Hawaiian Falls. Like a totem pole? Like a totem pole face. Oh my word. And so we've been reading through the story of Elijah and yep. the prophets of Baal yep. and false gods. Oh and my so word. Somehow he tells Rachel, all of those kids over there on those slides are worshiping that false god. <laughs> and so it's hard to be a parent yes, sometimes. you have to navigate so many things. Like, who would have thought to talk to him about, no, that's not what that is. But yeah, their little minds and hearts, it's a lot that we have to navigate. All right, what do you want to talk about? Uh, We've told some parent stories. Well, because being a parent is a struggle, man. Oh, it's a struggle. It's a struggle. And I think that so much of those stories, so what we've talked about a lot is like some of the stories we've walked through with our kids help you with your kids to know like oh, all it's day. all going to be okay. Yeah. Because the struggle is what actually helps us step into like we're, we're, we're doing good. We're yeah. doing good. We've learned from the last time we screwed it up as a mom and dad. We're, we're going to be all right this time. We can handle it, right? No, I remember uh, you and Aaron came over once when your kids were little and McKinley was just a little girl. Yeah. And she spilled popcorn seeds. Oh, yeah. All over our kitchen. I remember. After you had told her not to carry them. Yeah, don't, don't pick carry that, it. Don't pick that bag it. up. Yeah. She spilled them all over. And the minute she spilled them, she like erupts into tears. <laughs> And I remember watching how you guys handled that. And then as Lillian got older, the same kind of things yeah. have happened. Yeah. And I always think back like, it's just popcorn. Right. It's just popcorn that's been spilled out on the kitchen. Yeah. I don't need to go crazy or I don't need to be mad or yeah. my kid isn't a mess. Well, remember that phrase when we were kids, don't cry over spilled milk. Yeah. And I didn't really know what it meant all the time. But I think as we grow as parents, I'm realizing something Aaron and I say is like, I want my kids to, we're raising great adults right. we're not raising great kids yeah because if they grow up and they're just still kids we did something wrong yeah and so we're trying to get them and tug them into something that they're created to be but if we teach our kids that they should cry over spilled milk right. or they should be scared over spilled right. popcorn then they now have this like weird performance anxiety right throughout their life and, and it won't allow them to get to more right because and if, they'll just be insecure and if we as parents see each popcorn spill as spilled milk, man, if we freak out over spilled milk, then we're going to end up either doing damage to our kids yeah. or uh, 
giving up this struggle of parenting because yeah. it is hard. It's daily. Yeah. It's daily conversations about tiki torches yeah. that help us get there. I think that most of the time on the podcast, as we're talking about the tug of more, yeah. how we want to get to more, we're talking about in business, right. in ministry, in our relationships, yeah. in our personal yeah. health. But I think also like kind of for our kids, no. we want them to have all that God has for them. Like Absolutely. I want my kids to be smarter than me yep. and more successful than me and yep. happier than me. and understand the Bible better than me. I All want them the to know like the foundation of who God is in their life even more than I did sooner than I did. Like, yeah. and I think that, uh, man, it's a struggle and it's a tug. And so as parents and as people who are even spiritual parents, you don't have to have kids to not have people, young people in your life that you're leading. We just got to keep, keep tugging. Yeah. Why is it so hard though? Why, why isn't raising kids like it was for Carl Winslow? Uh, remember Carl Winslow yeah, it on always Family ends, Matters? Ends yeah, in the perfect. The moral of the story. Yeah, is. like or on a uh, Fresh Prince. <laughs> yeah, there was always like Will and Carlton. Yeah. It only took thirty minutes. Right, and it was it's all, all like figured out. out or Full do- house. Stephanie should be running upstairs, slamming the door. Which I was always like, I am not allowed to oh, leave no. the living room and get, slam the door. I would get I would broke off if so I so <laughs> much trouble. <laughs> yeah, but somehow Uncle Jesse gets her downstairs. They're all talking. It's all good by the end. I think so. I kind of we wonder, just so dated ourselves. Well, yeah, because we're old. <laughs> okay. I mean, I don't know what the new show. What is it? Uh, Good luck, Charlie. I have no idea. I don't know. Zero so being, idea. That's probably not. That's probably outdated too. I have no yeah. idea. Um, but yeah, I think that it might be different. Maybe for moms and dads, but for me as a mom, like you as a woman, as a mom who's carried your kid, you carried them in your body. Now they're on the outside of your body. It literally does feel like you have your heart running around on the outside, mm. and and you want the best for them. And you already, I already made a lot of mistakes. And I don't want them to make them. Right. And so I try sometimes. This is a new show, The Goldbergs, Beverly Goldberg. So that's not new. That's been out. Well, I'm saying it's a bunch current, of seasons. It's still a current, oh, it's still show, a current show. So it's not old. Oh, yeah. You're Bev. Sometimes I'm Beverly. Bev all day. Because I'm trying to like swoop in and save and help and protect because I just don't want them to feel pain. I don't want yeah. them to walk through the hurt that I walk through. I don't want them to make the same mistakes that I walk through. And because. I mean, I don't know, it's probably for mom and dad, but I think as moms, like, because we so have, like, been the nurturer and coddler of them, we feel like if they do, then we screwed it up. Mm. That we didn't do enough or we, there's more we could have done. Yeah. And so I think it's a struggle to find the right balance of when to swoop in and when to let them learn. Yeah, that's for sure. It's like helicopter helicopter parents. Good grief. It's, it's easy to be a helicopter parent. Uh, but that's not always good for the kid. No. They've got to have they got to have some scraped knees. Man. They've got to have some bloody elbows. Yeah. Every once in a while to be able to grow. Yeah. Because like when Titus falls down and scrapes his leg or Lily hurts herself, that's a new level of pain that they've now experiencing. Right. But now they know they'll be okay. Right. And so the next time they get hurt, it's not as bad. Yeah. And the same thing with our yeah. kids as they start to get older. Yeah. Uh, that as they start to feel pain or they don't get invited to a party mm-hmm. or they have some friends talk bad about them or right. whatever, guess what? That's life. Right. We live in a fallen world. Yep. And if we bubble, if we bubble wrap our children, uh, there's only two options. One, we somehow keep them in that bubble for all of their existence, but it's not it's real. Bubble. Right. Eventually that bubble gets popped and they're yeah. thrust into reality yeah. and then they freak out. Yeah. The world is going to pop the bubble no matter what. Yeah. And if we haven't taught them how to like protect themselves, their own hearts, their own minds before they step into it, they're going to fall apart. They're going to fall apart. So parents can kind of fail one of two directions. Yeah. They can either over bubble wrap mm-hmm. or not put up any guardrails. Yeah. So let's talk about, let's talk about those. Yeah. We're already kind of in the bubble wrap. Yeah. The, the people that, that, that bubble wrap it and want to protect from everything, the kids eventually rebel. Yeah. So I went to Bible college. Yep. And uh, and so I grew up relatively sheltered. Mm-hmm. But my parents still, like, I still got in all kind of trouble. I was in a bunch of back of police cars. I got kicked out of every school, kicked off every bus, yeah. got in fights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You all were still things. a mess, but, but a I good, was a mess. you were a good But, mess. like, my parents were good and, like, mm-hmm. sheltered me from a lot of things. But then I show up to Bible college, and I see these kids that have, like, legit – Never heard a swear word. Yeah. Never seen a naked person. Right. Like what? Like you, you've never seen a rated R movie. Like right. super mega sheltered. And then it's like they would get to Bible college and they would freak the junk out. Yeah. 
because they now didn't have mom and dad over there yeah. with their thumb on them. Yeah. And they would go bananas. Yeah. And I can't imagine what it's like at a secular college. Right. I had a friend growing up um, that in high school kind of went crazy for a season. And then in one like moment of conversation between us where I'm trying to like, hey, what's going on? She said, you know, I grew up so much that everything was wrong that when I finally was faced with some choices, I wasn't actually sure what was right and what was wrong. Hmm. I wasn't actually sure if everything's wrong, then maybe nothing's wrong. Yeah. If everything I did was not good enough or perfect enough or, you know, and I was sheltered from all of it, then maybe maybe my mom was actually wrong and everything's fine. And so she said, I just dove into it instead of having the conversation of like, yes, some is good, some is bad. What what the Apostle Paul says, like yeah. everything's permissible, not everything's beneficial. And that's true in parenting too. Yeah. There's some things we can let our kids screw up. We can know they're not gonna get their homework done. And it's okay to let them get a zero sometimes on their paper because they're not gonna screw up their whole life, yeah. but it's gonna teach them. Yeah. It's gonna teach them that uh, if you didn't turn the paper in, you got a zero and your grade's gonna suffer. Maybe they don't care. Yeah. My kids cared. No, it's prioritizing the fight and it's like talking through the why. Right. I think for me, raising the kids, what I try to do really hard is teach them how to think, yeah. not just know what to do. Yeah. Like there's a difference between knowing the answer to a math problem and knowing how to do the math problem. Right. No, it's true. I, like understanding the rules. Right. And so when I can teach my kids how to process information, not just specific like this happens, you do this. Right. I don't know if I'm explaining no, that you well. Are. I, that I'm helps the, them throughout life. I'm thinking the like phrase of um, why. My, your kids, I know, went through this phase because I was around them. Mine too, in that younger, like two and three age, they're saying, you tell them something and they go, why? Why? Mm -hmm. Why? Over, they want to know why. Yeah. And a and lot of times- it makes you nuts. You want to say, because I said so. Yeah, get out of here. Right. <laughs> Shut I'm, up, kid. I'm in charge. <laughs> That's why. Yeah. But if we can help them understand the why behind mm -hmm. the what, it, it teaches them in life. Yeah. It helps them. And then I think the other piece of the bubble wrap is then the other people. You mentioned a minute ago hmm. the not getting invited to a birthday party, mm -hmm. the like hurt between people. The Beverly in me wants to swoop in mm -hmm. and call all their friends the over. The helicopter mom. And, and, yeah. yeah, and go, okay, Jimmy, you said this to him and then you said this to her and here's what's happening and you're just being insecure and you're being self-centered and we just need to all apologize. That's what I want to do. Yeah. It's not what we can do. No, I remember I had a guy that I had a lot of problems with when I was, when I was a kid. Yeah. And uh, my dad, he said to me, hey, Trustin, I'm not going to say his name in case he's watching. Yes. Uh, but he said, hey, Trustin, you're always going to have a so-and-so in your life. Yeah. Yep. And I was like, what? No, this guy better not follow me around my whole <laughs> life. And he's like, no, 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 not this guy. But, but you're always going to have someone who's mean or yep. picks on you or says some negative yep. things or who's a jerk. You're always going to have those. And for as I am knocking on the door of 40 yeah. for the last 30 years since right. my dad taught me that I constantly meet guys and I just tell myself oh they're just another yeah. insert the name right they're just another so-and-so but that's a lesson it's that, a super that, lesson that that, that 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 my dad took the time yeah. to sit down and teach me correct how to navigate people because what someone could do was try to handle it for you. I remember in kindergarten, McKinley is assertive and talkative and uh, has a lot of opinions. And she did great all through preschool. All But then she goes to kindergarten and there's this group of her and three other girls and they could not get along. Yeah. They were all the same personality. They all wanted to be in charge. They all wanted to be the line leader. They all, yeah. and like, it was like we were in this conference all the time and we had to sit down and explain like, hey, you're similar personality. And so actually you guys could be great friends, but instead, but I just had to coach her. It, I couldn't be in charge of those other girls and their mamas, that's not my job. Yeah. But we have opportunities as parents to not bubble wrap, but to what you're saying, uh, infuse and instill some truth that will then we think it's not a big deal it would have been easy for me to just be like go find other friends yeah it would have been easy for your dad to just be like that guy's the worst yeah or punch him in the mouth and he won't talk to you yeah anymore. but instead <laughs> to take some time to instead be like uh because what i had to tell mckinley in that moment was that she was wrong too right not that just those girls were mean and wrong but that she was wrong too that yeah. you're too assertive and you're you're being uh opinionated and bossy and like but let me help coach that into leadership not into craziness and i think that's real important that we, we want to bubble wrap it mm -hmm. but how can we instead guide and lead it 
Yeah, there's a difference between bubble wrap and guardrails. Correct. Correct. We need to give our children guardrails. Right. We need to like, here's what you're allowed to do. Here's what you're not allowed to yeah. do. We're not our kids' friends. Mm -mm. We're our kids' authority and leaders yeah. and mentors in life. Which is hard. Um, and so like, they need a curfew. They need yeah. to not have their devices in their room yeah. at night. They need to not get a cell phone until the right. age that you determine. Yeah. They need to not get a boyfriend or girlfriend right. until right. like there needs to all be all the rules. There needs to be rules. Right. Just not well, I said all. Not just not all the rules is the real answer. Like there needs to be rules and guardrails. Yeah. Just not so many that they're stifled that they yeah. are not able to make decisions. And then we shouldn't be the ones that introduce the chaos. I I, uh, mm. I talk to parents all the time. That's good. Man. And they're like, well, you know, I know my kids are going to drink, so I'll just rather them drink at my house. Oh, yeah. No, that's ridiculous. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait a right. minute. You're going to break the law and let your 15-year-olds drink in your house with you, their friends? Right. Because you don't want them to get in That's another form of bubble wrap. Correct. But like super weird precedents right. that were no, created. Right. Like yeah. make the right guardrails well, or that the, are Bible-based. Yeah, or the like, well, I can't get them to do that. Do you pay for the cell phone that they're on? Do oh, you, I hear that. Do, I, can, I can't. I can't get them to come. They won't. Come they won't to go to church, church on Wednesday. I, I can't get they them won't. to stop doing this. Or yeah. They won't. They won't listen to me. I'm like, Ethan Barr sitting right there. I can still pick him up. It's not easy for me. He's bigger than me, but I can still lift the kid up, and my husband sure could. And so yeah. I'm like, I'm not trying to. I'm not telling you dra drag your kid actually physically to church, but you can. You are still in charge as long as they live in your house. You're still, your home rules still apply. And I think so often it's, you already said it, it's because we want to be their friend. Yeah. We, we don't yeah. want them to get mad at us. Yeah. I, uh, our kids have never yelled, I hate you. I was about to ask that question. No. Have your kids yet said anything like, yes. they're the worst? Yeah. Titus yeah. has said, you don't love me. Yeah. Uh, and I like, I'm like, yes, I do. And then I go and cry in the bedroom because <laughs> I'm like, oh, I hope I'm not doing this wrong. No. Uh, but I remember a time that my mom and dad took my door off my bedroom. I was like being a punk. Yeah. And my dad was just like, hey, this is my house. Right. Like, yeah. You don't, you don't, you lost your door. Right. And it, it like helped shaking me as a young teenager, as a, I guess, middle aged teenager. Yeah. Like, oh man, my parents are in charge. Yeah. No. And we have to, I think, assert some of those dominance. And we hear that as a real negative word. We do it in love. No, for sure. He didn't take my door off and break it in half over my head. Right. No, but right. But like, he didn't make Follow you sleep outside no. in the cold. Like, yeah. But I think that what we so often think is, well, it won't work. But have you tried it? Yeah. Like, I would just, oh, man, Easton knows the story. Like, he would not take the trash out. It's like one job he had. He would not take the trash out. He would not. It goes out on Monday and Thursday. Take it out in the morning before you leave for school. It's your job. And he, he like, all the time would forget. And I would get so, I would just be nagging and yelling at him. And one day, Aaron said, if you don't take the trash out today, we're taking your car, car keys for the whole weekend. And I was like, that is such an extreme punishment for the trash. And sure enough, he forgot. And Aaron was like, we're taking his car keys for the whole weekend. And I'm like, what? What? No, no, he's going to be so mad. He has so many things to do this weekend. All these. And I'm like sad for him. Yeah. Brother takes the trash out now. No, I, dude, same thing. My parents did the same thing. There was something about those keys something that was such a big it. deal to me. And so I think for parents that we should examine what's important, what's important. Because maybe it's the car keys, maybe it's the Xbox right. or the Game Boy, maybe it's the iPad, maybe it's swimming in the pool or going to the water park, or I, I don't know what it is. Yeah. Do you know what it isn't? What? Going to church. Oh, my word. Can I, we say that for one? Because oh, I, 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 I wish oh. I want to slap parents. I was a youth pastor yeah, for 10 years. Yeah, if you're listening and you're mad at us because you, you do this, sorry, you shouldn't do it. I don't care. You're wrong. <laughs> I was a youth pastor for 10 years. Now I'm lead pastor yes. for, in senior leadership for right. now living church 10 years. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times a kid doesn't do their homework, and so mom says, well, you're not going to youth group. No. Let me tell you something. If you, Before your kid is not allowed to go to youth group, you should make him sleeping on the floor and take his bed out of his bedroom. Correct. Correct. You should not give him food or a bed. <laughs> you should throw his toothbrush in the toilet. I'm, I'm dead I know, serious. I know you are. Before, I, I before I you, with you take him away from the local church, the local church is the greatest partner you have in raising your kids. 100%. There's nobody better than the Holy Spirit to speak to your kid. Yeah, it's true. 
and you know, and and youth leaders. Correct. That's what I'm saying. We're say. just teenagers yeah. for the most part. They understand. And so your kid coming to church and saying, "My mom's crazy. My dad's right. a jerk." Guess what? The youth leader is going to be on your side, at least uh, here at Living Church, yeah. 99% uh, yeah. of the time. All the time because and the, and the fact is your kids are more likely to listen to their their voice all day. than they are ours. And so like <sighs> oh man, I hear it and I'm like Fine, they can't go to Chick Fil A after church. That's, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, they can't go. They can't to, go to the school thing. They right. can't go to to hang out with their friends at the park or whatever. I hear parents like, "Oh, our kid, there's no way I could not let them go to prom," but they're not going to church camp because they got a D. Like, wait, 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 wait a, a minute, minute. Wait a minute. What? Oh man. And so, like, they, we have to push our kids into in the, the right into the right direction yeah. that we want them to become. It's super true. It's super true. And I think. So the bubble wrap is a piece that some people struggle with because we want to protect, we want to guard, maybe because of our own experience, maybe because we're just hovering parents. But then there's some people that then just are kind of detached. What's the word you used? You used another word. Detached, dismissive, um, overwhelmed. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know what to do. So they don't dig in. They don't do and anything. The, and the kids are in charge. Yeah. The Bible literally says, if you spare the rod, if you don't have discipline, you're going to spoil your child. Yep. And so that does not mean that you should be whipping your kid every day. Right. I'm an advocate of a kid needs a spanking every once in a while, yeah. depending on the kid's personality. Right. I was just, yeah, we Titus is super tender hearted. Mm -hmm. He's the most tender hearted kid. He's like me when I was yeah. little. And so he doesn't need to be as spanked as often as Lillian, right. which is kind of weird. Right. Lillian's tough and like made up her mind and she's going to be real yep. argumentative. Uh, so it's not just spanking, but it's discipline. Right. That we have to instill discipline in our kids yeah. or else the world will. No, it's true. And the world is called jail <laughs> or parking, t speeding tickets. Yeah, losing or, your job. Or, or, oh, I got a baby right. before I wanted to have a baby. Correct. There's a lot of consequences. Stuck in relationships that are abusive. The world are, is full of incorrect. consequences right. and we need to be giving our kids consequences Absolutely. for disobedience. No, it's so important. I think that we don't, again, Sometimes because we want to be their friend, sometimes because of our own bad experience, because we had parents that bubble wrapped us, and so we're trying to be loose. And then sometimes we're too wrapped up in our own junk that we're not paying attention. That's a good one. And we, we parents are overwhelmed with their life stresses. Yeah. That they they don't check they out. They don't want to. Yeah, they check out. Yeah. They don't want to pick up another problem. No. Uh, so. But I'll, guess what? If you don't deal with it when they're little. Yeah. You're going to deal with it when they're big. It's true. And the checks you're going to have to write to bail them out then oh, are a lot bigger. Oh, man. It's true. It's a lot better to have to deal with a uh, seventh grade problem than it is to deal with a 27-year-old problem. Right. Right. Like, I'd no, rather instill correct. discipline in my 10-year-old than try to instill discipline in my 30-year-old. Yeah. Because I keep finding parents talk to me all the time. My 30-year-old still lives at home. Yep. They won't get a job. They don't have no drive and discipline. And I'm like, right. You didn't spank them because they didn't do their homework. Right. No, it's true. And I mean, even even take that even here that like, it's a lot easier to dis discipline your seven-year-old than it is your 17-year-old. Like, For sure. So often we find people who are like, now everything's hit the fan in life. Oh, I wish I would have. And it's like, it's kind of too late. Pastor Tristan, you, my senior, my senior Pastor Tristan, you got to talk to him. Right. You got to meet with him. They're leaving for college in four months and they're not right with God. You got you to talk to right. them. And I'm like, they don't want to talk to me. Right. They don't even know me. They haven't been to church right. in the last eight years of their life. Right. They haven't been to youth. They haven't been to camp. They haven't ever heard me preach on no. a Sunday. Right. I'm just some weird dude. Right. No, it's true. And get them planted. They got to plant it in the house of the Lord and then they're going to flourish. And I think we have to evaluate. So where are we at? You said a great thing. Each child too is a is a different kid that yeah. requires different things. And so I have found myself being more hovering of one and being more lax with another because mm -hmm. of their personalities. I have to pay attention to myself and go, now, wait a minute. Uh, they both need discipline and structure. It might look different for each one. I think that's a super important piece because we can't, what you said, I can't discipline Easton and McKinley the same way because they won't, they, she will not respond. She'll be like, that's fine. She's the kid that like, yeah, you can spank her a hundred times and she just look at you and be like, cool, I'm good. You know, yeah. whereas he would melt in a popsicle and like a popsicle and be whatever. But if I would have disciplined them exactly the same way, uh, it, it wouldn't have worked. And so we have to be intentional. We, we are parents, like yeah. it's, a, it's a real responsibility. It has to be a priority. And if we feel like we're flailing, it's not okay to just like three years worth of, oh, well, I'm overwhelmed. Yeah, we're gonna talk about single parents in just a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 
it takes it takes both parents engaged. Yeah. If you're married and you have both parents in the home, you've got to have both parents engaged. I don't engaged. care. And Listen, if both parents hate each other, right. Okay. Y'all might be on the verge of divorce. Love your kid enough yeah. to be engaged well, with the kid. And if you're if you're remarried and, and married and you're co-parenting your kids not in the same home, you got to be. I, there's nothing that makes me more brokenhearted than parents here uh, at Living Church that they and their uh, ex spouse they can't get they can't get along. It's the kids are not the ones who got divorced. Like it's not right. their fault. And we've got to at least for the sake of them work together to parent it's so important you mean so like if people are married to somebody else and live together and like it's the dad's kid that that new woman who he's married to she has to have some authority absolutely he, or or vice versa the dad has they to all have, have some authority all the parents in the conversation yeah. as long as they all you know are a part of their life they all have to have a a share and a voice um, so it's not yes. like your kids and my kids. No, because when no. you say yes to marrying someone that you're saying has yes children, to the family. you're saying yes to all mm -hmm. of it. And something you and I both have pastored through a ton with people is that dynamic of like, well, they're not, they're not their dad or they're not their mom. And yeah. it's like, no, 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 they are, they are now, they well, are now a part of the their life. They're the new influence. Yeah. They're, they're an the new authority covering. And a, yeah. They're an authority and a, and a leader and a figure in their life that, that they can either learn to love and respect and admire, yeah. or it can be a detriment to your life. And the reason I bring it up is I think for men, a lot of times it's easier for us to disconnect from yeah, the kids. For sure. Because if either my kids, I'm very present in their lives, but if one of the kids falls down and hurts themselves, they call for Rachel. Yeah just because no. they were in her body. It's tr it's a real thing. There's just a connection there. Yeah. And so it's easy for me. I work during the week. I'm gone at meetings. I am not with the kids as much as Rachel right. is. And so it would be easier for me to disconnect. But I, unfortunately, what I see a lot of dads do sometimes is just let the mom do it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Listen, I don't know how every relationship pans out if you do the laundry or she does the cooking or what. Like, I don't know all, how all that pans out, but you need to be involved in parenting absolutely you need to have some daddy daughter dates some daddy son dates we need to have some conversations we need to be back up to mom it's true and so if i walk in the house and there's chaos erupting all i know is i have rachel's back yeah even if rachel's losing her junk <laughs> and she's out of line i at least pull her aside and say hey what the junk what is going yeah. on right now yeah. calm down i got it we have to as men help the situation I know you've worked hard at work all day. Right. I know you're tired from your job. I know all you want to do is go golf or get out in the garage and work on the car. I know. But those parents, those children are gifts it's true. from God and they're only with us. No, I'm in that season, you know, right now that I'm like, oh, went too fast, you know? And they say the whole, like the days are long, but the years are short and it's really true. And yeah. I, you know, they say it and you're like, okay, yeah, you, yeah, but I haven't slept in three days. But the truth is, it, whether you're mom or dad, uh, it can be easy as a mom. I know for me, it was easy when Aaron, uh, when we were first married and our kids were younger, Aaron flew uh, corporate planes for a living. And so he would be gone four, six, nine days at a time. Yeah. And I'd be, you know, alone. And the minute he got home, my tendency was to be like, here you go. Yeah. I'm done. I'm I need done. a break. Yeah. And now, now granted a break is good. A break for a, a moment, an afternoon, an evening, yeah. something like that. But my tendency was to want to just disengage the whole time he was home. Yeah. And that's not healthy either. Right. And so we have to uh, take care as moms too, to know that, hey, we're nurturing. We might be the ones during the day. We might be working hard somewhere uh, and then coming home. We have to savor the time we have and the energy we have and then understand the seasons. Because then when we shifted, when we moved here uh, to Texas and we shifted where he had been traveling all the time and I'd been home all the time, he was the fun guy. Because he got to be. Yeah. Because he was only around yeah. a one or two days a week. Yeah. And so I didn't make him. Now, he did, like you just said. Mm -hmm. He always had my back if something was serious. But for the most part, I I wanted them to have the best moments when he was around. So I let him be the fun guy. But when we got here, there was a little bit of a season where we had to be like, hey, hey, we have to readjust this. Yeah. Because now we're together all the time. Yeah. You have to equally uh, discipline with me. And so I think as parents, we have to look at that too. Look at our seasons. Yeah. If mom's not been working and now she is, uh, we have to readjust that. That yeah. dad, now, now all the responsibilities aren't all on her For still. Because sure. that was her full time job. Now she's going to work in the workplace. You got to share the load. I think For it's so sure. important. Yeah. It's all communication yeah. as parents together, it's teamwork. Yeah. Teamwork makes the dream work. It does. So, okay, single parents. Yeah. 
if you're a single parent, first of all, good job. Good job. You're like doing a if great you're job. just feeding them and clothing yep. them and bringing them to church, like you're winning. Yeah. There's some challenges Absolutely. that are there. I, I don't know if I should say someone's name. So you tell me. We have a. I have no idea. We have a girl in our church. Say, so I don't we have a girl in our church who's a single mom. Yeah. Or who's a single mom, and she has a young son, that's probably six. Yeah. And she was raising him by herself. And yeah. you know what she did intentionally? Showed up to stuff all the time. Yeah. And her boy would run around and have these dads that would just talk to him and speak life into him. And just she would position herself Correct. in places in proximity to me, yep. to Aaron, yep. to a bunch of other men, just so that her son could have some other male figures Absolutely. in his life. Through her faithfulness and proximity to the church, yeah. she found a husband yeah. and has a great man right. who now can be an influence over Absolutely. her over her kid. And so I think if you're a single parent, I know you're alone. Right. But you don't have to be. Correct. No, you said it before that here, I mean, here at Living Church and in the local church, it's the hope of the world and, and the goal of it is to partner with parents yeah. to help us uh, take our whole family into all that God has for us. And like we say it when we dedicate children that like we're partnering with you, yeah. that we're in this with you. And, and there's no better place to not just find community for mom or for dad, but for the kids too. Yeah. And to have a people they grow up with, they may not have the same home life you were hoping for them to yeah. have, but they can experience it here. Yeah. It's important. So if you're a single parent and you're in proximity to living church, yeah, come and sign up for a yeah. team. Yeah. Like, I'm telling you, we have a church full of incredible men that if you're a single mom and you showed up and you were like, I'm gonna sign up for the teardown team. Right. And you went to three dudes at Living Church and said, hey, could you just bring my little son along with you and tear right. down and help him Absolutely. learn how the dolly works? And We've got a hundred guys that Absolutely. would do that. Absolutely. Or if you're a single dad and you have a daughter or a son that you need somebody to kind of get their arms wrapped yeah. around them, we have countless women that would, would love Absolutely. to be a part of that. And if you try one and doesn't work, don't give up. No. Like that's why we're called the body of Christ mm -hmm. is so that we can help each other. No, it's super good. I think it's really important. What's the saying? It takes a village. It does take a village. And so like jump into a village. No, like right. if you live somewhere else, jump into a village. Even for me, I my parents are the best. Yeah. I have great parents. I believe that I am who I am today because of the great parents that I had. Yeah. But it took a village for them. I Absolutely. remember uh, when I was getting my driver's license, all I wanted was a monster truck. Like, mm. and now this is like before a Craigslist. monster truck and a Tasmanian devil tattoo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, God, that my mom <laughs> wouldn't let me get a Taz tattoo. And so I wanted a monster truck. This is before the days of Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. Right. You could only see things in Auto, Auto Trader, Trader, which is like a magazine that magazine. we would buy at the gas station. Yeah, for like a nickel or a quarter or something. I remember that. And so I would find all these monster trucks in our area, and I would like beg my dad to go and look at these vehicles. Yep. We would go and look at them. They're all ragged out, right. beat up, bent frames, front ends all beat up, barely running. And every time I'm like, this is the one. Yeah. Dad, it's got 38 inch tires. This is it. Buy me this truck. And like we had this and I had saved a bunch of money. And so, so, you so I'm like, a, I'm about to drop all yeah, the money on this truck. Decision. Oh, man. And so I wouldn't listen to my dad. I would not listen to my mom. I wanted a lifted truck. Well, one day on a Sunday, there was a guy at our church who drove a big lifted truck. And he comes up to me in the lobby. He says, hey, Trustin, you want to go out and look at my truck? I'm like, yeah, let's go. So he takes me out crawling around and looking at it. And after I'm done, he's telling me all about it. He says, you know, uh, what kind of vehicle do you want? I said, man, I want a truck just like this. He says, you know, can I give you a piece of advice? Don't buy a lifted truck. It's like, what? He said, yeah, because guys that have lifted trucks, we drive them real crazy and we beat them up and they're junk. What you should do is you should buy a stock truck and then save some money and then lift it yourself. yourself. And I walked away from that literally 30 second conversation with an entire mindset shift. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are these the same words that your dad had just my dad been saying to you? For months had been telling me these exact same that words. You should buy a regular truck and lift it later. But do you want to know the truth that I know now? Yeah. Years later, my dad told me, Hey, Trustin, I went and told that guy he was my friend. I went and told him yeah. to tell you that yeah. because you wouldn't listen to me. Yeah. Why do I tell that story? Because sometimes yeah. 
a outside perspective, no. a outside voice that's not from mom or dad will listen to way easier Absolutely. than we will mom or dad. No. But that only is possible with the village. It's true. Only because my dad had another buddy in the church who was his friend, could that friend come and speak some wisdom into no. me yeah. to obey my dad. No, uh, McKinley forever called Rachel her craft mom. But it was because in certain seasons, there were some hard seasons with Mick that she and I were just not, we were not on the same page. We couldn't communicate, it wasn't working. And I remember telling her like, hey, can she like do some crafts with you? And you just tell her some good stuff. Yeah. And and she and she did. And it, it's exactly what you're saying that she would come back like, no baby, this is not how you should, no, you should do it like that, no. And she would come to me and be like, you know what I think I should do? And say the exact, things that I've been trying to get her to understand, but it was because she had someone else in her life yeah. that could love her and show her something different. Yeah. I don't do crafts. So no. I, I don't I don't know I don't have patience for it. Yeah. It doesn't look good when I but do Rachel it. But Rachel enjoys it and has fun with it. Loves it and like and so she was able to take something that McKinley also loved crafts, use that and then use her words and wisdom to help things that I was struggling to navigate. Yeah. So don't try to do it alone. No. You have to do it alone. But you right. don't have to do all of it alone. Right. Find some people around yeah. you that can surround your kids, that can speak life, that's in the local church, yeah. that's through the youth ministry, yep. that's through other men and women that right. have raised their kids well, yep. do it. No. Because just like there's more for us, yep. there's more for the next generation. It's true. And so we have to be on their tug team and help the little guys tug towards Oh yeah, more. We're, we're showing them what it looks like to tug, but we're also, like, they're watching us, but we can show them what it looks like to tug for themselves yeah. and then hand them a, the rope in the right moment and, and they can have success in, in so much. And so, yeah, whether you're single, whether you're uh, in a blended family, whether you're, you and your husband are the parents of, of your kids, like, it takes all the people to make it happen. And the local church, you have to, par you ha you have yeah. to partner with it. Don't give up. No, keep going. Don't give up. Moms and dads, don't give up. You're doing good. Keep going. Keep loving them babies, even when they're making you crazy. Oh, man. Because before you know it, they're going to be adults, and they're going to either say, my mom and dad didn't care about me, or they're going to say, my mom and dad were the best. Yep. I'm so thankful they helped me step into more. Yep. Love you guys. If you have any questions that you want us to answer, yeah. hit us up. Let us know. Yeah, do it. See ya.